On behalf of the customer engineering team, I would like to welcome you to day four of Altitude. Today, my teammate and I are going to walk you through understanding the flexible future of your application integrations. My name is Chika Echuku. I'm a customer engineer here at BetterCloud. And I'm Justin Little. I'm also a customer engineer here at BetterCloud. And we are customer engineering. We're the expert advisory group, also known as the professional services team here at BetterCloud. Our primary focus is on custom work. So we do custom integration engagements with customers. So let's say that you had multiple applications that you'd like to build and deploy in your environment. We would do that. We also do paired programming sessions where we offer five 90 minute sessions and teach you how to be a developer and build these integrations into your environment. We also do integrations. So 90% of the integrations that you see in the integration center, we've either touched or built at some point in time. We are also responsible for workflow templates. So we heard from you on some of the use cases and best practices for building workflows, and we created templates out of that. So the agenda for today, we'll be discussing new integrations, what we've added to the integration center since last altitude, enhancements to the integration center, big stuff there. We'll do a live demo of creating your own custom integration, and we'll show you new ways to extend your automations with the Better Cloud API. So putting Better Cloud at the center of your applications, what does that look like? So it's now easier than ever to build integrations in the integration center. And we've expanded the catalog of these integrations, and we'll get more into that in a bit. We understand how difficult it is to navigate the sprawling environment of SaaS applications. We understand how lost you may feel trying to navigate in and out of those ad tens and hundreds of admin consoles. Our goal is to get you out of those admin consoles and into one single pane of glass, which is better cloud. We want to show you new ways to use the inbound API to trigger and expand your automations. And we want to show you unseen flexibility, and we can't wait for you to make the most of it. Since the last altitude, we've added over 20 new integrations to the integration center. We've added applications with, with actions for data management, such as Greenhouse and Ignite. We've added applications with actions for communication, such as AirCall or Ignite or MindFlash. Uh, applications with project management actions, such as Trello and Rike. Applications with security, uh, such as DigiCert, and applications for, for IT service management, such as Spoke. We've also had more unique use cases where we've had partnerships develop and test accounts come of that and collaboration in the actions that um, are added to the integration, such as we did with Code42. We've had situations where a customer comes to us with an integration that they would like, um, for instance, with Druva, and we were able to create a collaboration to get a test account from Druva and create a win-win situation for everyone. We had a situation with Greenhouse where a partnership was formed and we collaborated on creating a documentation um, for the actions we've cre we'd created for onboarding and offboarding. We also have situations from office hours, such as with Jump Cloud, which is a, an already existing integration for our integration center. But we had you guys come into the office hours with new actions that you would like to build on top of the existing integration. So our team went ahead and added these actions to the integration center so they're available for everybody. We've also been solving more just unique, complex uh, use cases for customers, such as with Azure and Jira Service Desk. We've been working on triggering workflows and actions from external web hooks, such as Bamboo HR, as well as writing scripts to trigger the Better Cloud API uh, from so something as simple as Google Form submission. All these, of course, are made possible thanks to the new integration center enhancements. So integration center enhancements, some big stuff here. Let's get into it. So we've made some major backend architectural improvements to push these updates to you. We noticed a lot of user experience issues with, with uh, customers having to uninstall and reinstall every time an integration update was released. We made that process a lot easier so you get those updates live. Authentication checks. We've introduced this idea of an auth check so you can validate your authentication upfront when we install the integration to prevent failures down the line. 
new forms. We've introduced restricted fields. So we noticed a lot of customers wanted to protect against uh, passwords or encrypted data input. So we removed that from view. Uh, required fields. We noticed a lot of APIs require specific values when we're making these API calls. So we let you know up front when it's missing uh, a field or something like that so that we don't, so we don't fail an action because of something that was missing. Toggle switches. So Boolean values are either true or false. We turn that into a toggle switch. Drop down lists. We made that customizable on your end for you to, for you to configure these values that we're passing to any given API. So a lot of these APIs require static values and you can customize these lists here. As well as display values. So a lot of these aren't very user friendly. So we gave you the ability to customize these display values for all these fields. So to demonstrate these enhancements to our integration center, I'm gonna walk you through creating your own custom integration. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to authenticate. I'm going to show you how to enter environment variables if you do need them. We're going to write a pre-request script that's going to help us handle this array that needs to be sent, as you can see here from the body. This specific action is going to be a create user action for the workplace by Facebook. As we're creating it, I'm going to point out the dynamic field edits that we've added, the dynamic form edits, the restricted fields that you can now apply, as well as the required fields. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into that. Over here in Better Cloud, you can go over to the integration center, which is where we already are, and create a custom integration. We'll name this Altitude Integration. If it's a logo that's already available. It should be searchable here. If not, you can do the other and integrate under that. For this case, however, Workplace by Facebook is already available, so we select that. For authentication, you can use an API token, you can use basic authentication, or you can use neither. Usually you select non in situations where you have to maybe encrypt the credentials before you send it to the API or some special unique use case. This situation, however, just requires an API token. So we'll go ahead and put that. The key for this is gonna be authorization. And I'm gonna copy my token over from here. And then we're gonna save them. Great, that was a success. So now that we're in here, uh, I'll show you back here on the basic information, you can see your API tokens hidden. If we needed an environment variable, this would be where you can add that. But for this case, however, we don't. What we do need, however, is a pre-request script, which is an extension. So we'll go ahead and get started with creating that. We're gonna write a data transformation script to help us with this. And it's gonna be the create user pre-request. It's gonna be an action pre-request script, so I'll select that. If we needed, um, if it needed to be an inbound request transformer, that would be a case where you had to maybe send data to the Better Cloud API. You could use that. But for this instance, however, this works. As you can see, we have a template here that's already all populated for us. Um, how, however, since this is just a very simple script that we're using for this example, I'm just going to grab that from over here um, and put that in here. So this script puts the schemas in the input request body and the schemas, as I pointed out earlier, is just this array that needs to be part of the body. We're going to call back with this request and um, go ahead and run this test to make sure that it's successful. Great. And we can save that. Now you can see it's available to be used here. So we'll go ahead and create our action, add an action for workflows. This is going to be the create user action. And this is going to create a new user in workplace. Now we can reference that pre-request script we've created. This is going to be a post request. 
and the URL is going to be this. Uh, for our payload, as you recall, the pre request script is handling one part of a payload, and the other part of the payload, we're just going to grab from over here. Put that there. So as you can see, we're sending a username, we're sending a name, as well as the uh, active true or false boolean. So we'll run this test and see how that goes. Great, that was a success. So we can go on to the next page. You can see from that response to that request, we have email, schemas, IDs, active username. These are all fields that you can select to use in your workflow. Uh, I think we think emails would be useful, so select that. Um, user ID is also another useful field to pass on along. Um, and maybe also username. Keep in mind that you're able to return to this page at any time, run the action from here, and reconfigure what you'd like to uh, have visible when you create your workflows. So if you decide later that you would like to have the active field, you can always come back in here, run this action, and select that. So uh, here for our username, these fields, we now have the ability to edit them. And you can call this username. You see this is a string because we're just, because each username is gonna be unique. But if it wasn't gonna be a unique value each time, say we had to set values for ticket numbers or something like that, you could make it a list and just enter all the different values that you like to preset. If it was gonna be a password, you could uh, select it to be a restricted field so that uh, the password value is hidden. Um, for our case, however, this is just a basic string, so we'll select that. And since it's required, we'll select that. Uh, active, we can change this as well. Notice this is a Boolean because we passed a true false value like Justin mentioned before. And now we have this toggle switch that shows up. Um, whenever we pass this and select a Boolean. And so we can leave that as so. And here, uh, this says we can change this to just be name. So it's easy to read. And we can select all of these and save. Now you can see the action is available here as an extension. And you can use it when you go in to configure your workflows. So now let's talk about extending our automations. So leveraging the Better Cloud API for your custom actions, what does that look like? So what if we wanted to trigger an action or a workflow in Better Cloud from an external source? Now you might be thinking, wonderful, I can create a custom integration directly in my environment, but what if I wanted to trigger Better Cloud from an external source? Well, we can do that with the Better Cloud API. So for example, if you wanted to trigger an action by creating a G Suite user from a custom script, we can do that. If we wanted to auto archive Slack channels after a few days, we can do that with the Better Cloud API with just a channel ID. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into using the Better Cloud API to its full potential. I'm gonna jump over to Postman to do that. Right, so in order to execute an action, first I need my action ID and it's associated parameters. So I'll show you how to do that now. We have this endpoint in the Better Cloud API. It's API v1 actions. So it's a get call. And another thing we need is our Better Cloud API token. And if you go to developer.bettercloud.com, it shows you how to grab that straight from the platform. So I'll go ahead and hit send on this. And we got a 200 okay. And under this content umbrella, I have all of my actions that's available in my Better Cloud environment. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I see that I have 399 actions. It's a lot of actions. What's most important is my action ID and its associated parameters. So right here, you can see what's required, what's not required, and its name for the parameter and its, and its uh, ID for the parameter. So, Let's go ahead and jump into executing an action. So right here, I already have set up the send email action in Better Cloud. And this endpoint is API v1 actions 
my action ID. So this is the action ID for the send email action forward slash execute. And this will be a post. And like the previous, I have the better cloud API token in my authorization header. And these are the associated parameters for the send email action. So I have my, my recipient. This is the parameter ID for the recipient. This is the subject line. This is the body. And then this is my connector ID. So let me show you how to grab this connector ID and explain what that is. I can see all of my installed integrations. And what if I had multiple instances of a particular integration and I wanted to take action from a particular integration? So let's say I had multiple Google instances, one for production, one for development. What if I wanted to take action from my production instance? I would go into my integration and then find my integration ID in the URL here. This will be my integration ID or connector ID that I'll need to make that API call to take action from. So I'll hop back over to Postman, and this is the associated connector ID for this integration here, and I'm going to hit send. What we're expecting here is an email that says action triggered, and I'm gonna send it to bat.man at guardians of the cloud. And what I got back was a 200 okay and a job ID. So this job ID should correlate to what you see in audit logs. And you can go over to Better Cloud Audit Logs and see our results here. So it looks like my email was sent to bat.man at Guardians of the Cloud. And I can actually click on job ID for the column and see that my job ID is here. This should be the job ID that's the same as what I saw in Postman in my response. Perfect. So let's just check to see I got that email. Wonderful, action triggered, perfect. So you might be thinking, wonderful, that's great. I can execute actions. Well, what if I wanted to trigger a workflow from an external source? Well, we can do that. So the most important step before executing a workflow is getting the workflow details to figure out what exactly I need uh, for my parameters. So this will be a get call and this will be API v1 workflows and then our workflow ID. The workflow ID should be visible in the URL as well when you're creating a workflow. So if we go into Better Cloud and, and go to workflows new and I create a workflow, give it a name, add a win trigger, add my, add my actions and I click save, an ID for that workflow is generated up top and I can grab that and use it for my workflows. So this workflow is entitled Altitude 2020 and essentially what I'm doing is taking my Google user and I am sending an email through the Better Cloud action. What we have here is our wind trigger. Anytime a new user is created in Google, this wind trigger doesn't exactly matter, but what we care about is our Google user context. And essentially what that means is being able to reference those attributes that come from that Google user that I'm referencing. So we have here, I'm sending it to the Google user's primary email and the subject is workflow triggered and altitude 2020 for the body. So let me hop back over to Postman and I'm gonna send this request here. Perfect, so I got a 200 okay and my job ID. So this job ID, just like before, uh, should be visible in your audit logs. And if you ever have any questions about whether did my workflow trigger or why, why am I not seeing it in audit logs, you can chat into support with this job ID and they can get more information on that for you or whatever the case may be. So perfect, I should see that my workflow triggered. Now let's just make sure. Wonderful, altitude. 2020 workflow completed successfully. So I should have gotten an email saying that my workflow triggered. Wonderful, awesome, perfect. So wonderful, we can trigger actions and trigger workflows from an external source, but what if I wanted to take it a step further? What if I wanted to query the Better Cloud Data Graph for all of my files that are shared publicly? Well, we can do that with GraphQL. So we have a very extensive data model of everything that you see in the Better Cloud platform uh, that's supported with our GraphQL uh, data graph. So if you go to developer.bettercloud.com and go to the Explore tab, you can find all of the all of the data points that we that we support. So everything from files to folders to users to groups and all of those attributes. 
we can support with the Better Cloud Data Graph. So we have some exciting news. Custom Triggers is coming soon. And the idea of this is to be able to take action and trigger workflows from any custom context. So let's say we have an HRIS system or some sort of actor, active directory that's extremely custom to you. We can, take, we can trigger your workflows off of that context and trigger better cloud from an external source. So this is very exciting and we can't wait to show it to you. It's coming soon. So all of this is great. This, this customization is wonderful, but what's most important is the use cases it solves. We can, we can solve uh, all kinds of custom use cases from IT, an IT ticketing system to trigger workflows, incident remediation, external sources of truth, user lifecycle management, event logging and management. All of this is super crucial to your, pro your daily processes and we wanna make that easier for you. So it doesn't stop here. We have an entire SaaS Ops community and you can go to betterit.cloud to join us on Slack. We also have a community page that just launched. I, I strongly recommend you check that out. And I've mentioned it a couple times, developer.bettercloud.com is going to be your hub for all information about the Better Cloud API. And the Postman collection that I was working in today, you can access as well. I'll share this slide out so you can access these links here and you can install this Postman collection directly into your instance. And also you can reach us at customer engineering at bettercloud.com anytime. We're available for all of your questions. And I just wanna say thank you. I hope you got a lot out of this presentation today. We have more features and integrations in the works as always. And please join us on Slack. We can't wait to hear from you and enjoy the rest of Altitude.